take a look at this big smiling fella. Today we have something from Creature Caster. They make resin models. Uh, virtually, I think all of them are demons of variety for use with some games you may have heard of before. Uh, we have a, a glutton demon here, which is obviously has some Nurgle influence going on, and that's what we're going to be painting up today. The main thing we're going to be using in this project is a lot of glazes and a lot of washes. So we get uh, a lot of variety uh, discoloration in the skin tone. So we're not too worried about just the standard highlight and base coat and shade colors because uh, that's going to be overtaken by all our color transitions we're going to do on the flesh. It took me some trial and error to figure out exactly what color to start off with here. I eventually decided to go with more of a standard flush tone, a little bit more pink in this case. And as we move into the more damaged areas on the model, we'll really start adding a, a lot of different colors and really start getting the variation going. So kind of, I kind of was going for the idea this is not really necessarily some demon from another world, but this is something that was human that got transformed into this hideous creature. The first wash we are using is Red Violet, and this color is going to eventually become very important on the project. Uh, right now I am just uh, putting it in very lightly into the recesses. Uh, you'll see as we get towards the end, I'm gonna be using this color a lot, lot more. Also, something else to point out is this is going to be a little bit hodgepodge because I was jumping around on the project painting different areas. Uh, after doing this wash, I realized I couldn't do like the wash on everything at once because it was going to take too long. So I'd work on an arm here, some horns there, some mouse over there. So we're going to jump around a little bit. Just doing a little bit of cleanup work now with the basic skin tone. This is one of the few highlights, real highlights, we are using on the skin. As I said, majority of the rest of the colors, we're going to be re relying on washes and glazes. For the boobos, I am picking those out in two colors. A majority of them I'm painting with game color Dead Flesh. has a bit of a green tone to it. And then some other ones, I went back and repainted those with game color Dull Yellow. And you can see I'm adding green to the scheme right now. And you're going to kind of see that disappear as we get uh, a little bit further into the project.
In case you haven't noticed, this model is completely covered in mouse. And when it comes to painting lips, I normally say just paint the bottom lip and the upper lip you can leave uh, alone. Uh, assuming we're talking about like 28 millimeter models. Because of the orientation of the mouths here, I actually painted the lips all around the same color on majority of them, except for the big one on the belly. Uh, that's because they were in such an odd position and just, it's not on the face. I really needed to emphasize the lips more. So we added the color to the upper lip as well as the bottom in most cases. You can see here, I'm now starting to add a little bit of blue into the flesh as well. And once again, this color is being applied very subtly now, but uh, eventually I'm gonna go back and add a lot more of this. But uh, again, it's about adding a lot of variation to this beast because we have something that could be bloody, it could be in, it's infected, it could be uh, bruised, you know, diseased. We have lots of different colors we can use on this demon. I'm trying to add a little bit of each of those colors here and there.
here's where things got a little bit difficult. Uh, he has this bloated, diseased arm thing going on here, and I really struggled on figuring out how to paint it. Uh, initially, like I started with the, the buboes, I, I wanted to put some green in this creature, and I started painting the arm green, and it just wasn't working out for me. Uh, then I tried red, something more bloody, like it was sunburn or the skin peeled off, and it looked pretty good, but it just didn't really fit the model. Eventually, I decided to go for blue, more like a bruised arm. It's the flesh is you know so stretched out. It's a lot of black and blue marks, and so that's what we're using here. We're using a lot of very heavy washes, a lot of stippling, all these colors once again to get a lot of variety into the flesh here. So uh, as the skin starts to move towards the more undamaged area we're going to add more red uh, but on the arm itself we're adding more blue and then we're going to add more variety to that we add some reds to the arm we add some greens uh, as some of the areas that stick out further we're going to add a little bit more flesh to those areas to uh, get a little transition those areas a little bit less damaged so there is a lot happening on this arm Part of the issue with the arm is visually attaching it, uh, not physically attaching it to the monster, but visually attaching it. So it's important that we get some of the flesh colors that we used on the rest of the body into the arm. Uh, those are slightly more tinted blue, obviously, but as we work on certain areas that may be less damaged, uh, we add a little bit of highlighting, a little color transition with more of the flesh color here. So this color has been repeated several times adding more and more of the skin tone as we work up on certain areas like towards the spike areas I try to make those a bit more undamaged flesh or some of the more uh, larger areas of all these bulges he has on his arm. All those bumps on his back, initially I was planning on doing those green, but that's when I was planning on having more green on the arm. And so instead we had to go with a different color. And you can see, we used a lot more of the red violet as we move away from the arm into the skin. So that area is very, not bloody, but it's kind of torn. And we're using more pinks and more flesh tones to highlight all those areas. And this leaving the initial dead flesh on a few areas, a few little pimples. And because we didn't use a lot of green, I did want to take that dead flesh and actually uh, tone it down a little bit. So once again, red violets, a thin glaze, just to get a little more color, uh, red color into those green and yellow areas, just to tone it down a little bit. And once again, it adds another glaze to it, adds a bit more discoloration overall to the model.
interesting thing to note, the arm I actually planned on painting last because I was using it to hold onto the model while painting it. Uh, because this thing's very heavy, I didn't have any real way to mount it. But uh, I eventually had to paint it because I needed to establish what color that would be to determine what other colors I was going to use on this project. And once I got that blue finally established, it determined what colors I'd be using on the rest of the model. It really kind of broke through a, a, a painting, mental painting barrier that I had. So the red, violet, and uh, blue suddenly became used more throughout the entire model. Sticking with our theme of glazes and washes, we are going to use those to completely paint his club. Started off with Vallejo Model Air Gunmetal, and now our first wash is olive green, and this is very thick, heavy wash going over the entire club. And we are going to do, I think we're doing about five washes on this club, and each successive wash is going to be just a little bit thinner, and not necessarily applied over the entire model. So each wash is going to build up on its own, uh, but because it's thinner, it's going to leave some of the previous wash showing closer towards the tips. So this is going to give us a lot of color variation in this club, and it's also very easy to do. Unfortunately, I don't have a recipe, color recipe for the tongues because I kind of forgot it. I was painting this thing back and forth, so many colors. Uh, by the time it came to paint the big tongue, I forgot why I painted the small tongues. Uh, Nova was red violets, and I did it over a red base with squid pink and white to highlight. Uh, I made the tongues a bit more red than normal because there was so much pink on this model. I thought uh, we, they need to be a bit red, so not everything on the model is pink. I purposely went light on the highlights on the tongues because I wanted to gloss them to give them a bit more of a saliva look. The mouths got a, a satin varnish and for the tongues uh, we're using some heavy gloss gel. This is the same stuff I used to do saliva in a previous video and I started off doing it very lightly but in the end I covered the entire tongue with this stuff, all the tongues, and actually really built it up heavily in some areas to get a little bit of dripping saliva or uh, collecting uh, drool in the mouse. Uh, it's so clear though, it actually doesn't show up that well. Maybe we should add a little bit of color to it. And there is our finished glutton demon. What a beast. A lot of interesting takeaways from this project. Uh, first of all, the thing about painting Nurgle or damaged uh, skin tone like a zombie or something you could be kind of sloppy and get away with it if there's a splash of blue or red or green on the skin that shouldn't be there well no one's going to tell you you're wrong because it's damaged skin it's diseased skin so even mistakes look good I had some difficulty on this project to begin with uh, mainly because I had green stuck in my head uh, secondly uh, I don't know about you, but when I paint something, I kind of need to know exactly what it is. I need to identify it to know how to paint it. 
And in this case, we have this thing here. I mean, is is the arm you know bruised? Is it uh, you know bloated? Is it diseased? Is it uh, gory? And I really couldn't figure out exactly how to do it because this is not something that can be easily identifiable uh, in human terms. <laughs> a big arm with mouths and teeth and tongues all over it. So I had a little bit of problem trying to figure out a color, but once I finally figured out the color on the arm, the rest of the project really fell into place. But you know what, enough of my rambling. Uh, this video is going on for quite a bit. So I'll leave it to you. I just want to thank Creature Caster uh, for sending me this big old demon. And I will say that there's a lot of detail on this model. Uh, I didn't really finish painting him. Uh, I just kind of stopped. I could have spent a lot more time, weeks more, highlighting and shading every little butt pimple on this guy. But uh, eventually I just had to stop and work on something else because it was getting a bit tiresome. So it's a really nice detailed model. It's a big old hunk of resin and uh, it was real fun to paint. So hope you enjoyed this. Get your own glutton demon from Creature Caster and thanks for watching. Bye bye. I don't mind telling you guys, the day this country went self-service was the day that hell began to bubble up and flood the earth.